Blog Talk Radio. Welcome to Women Who Rock Investigate, where branding just got even better for women. Our media source provides case studies in the areas of health, policy and government, human resources, and more. Our experts are handpicked with credible information to validate the latest in these studies. Join us each Tuesday at 10 a.m. Central Standard Time after Women Who Rock with Success. Now, let's go to the show. And good morning. Welcome, everyone, um, to the show. Um, this is your host, Ms. Diane Winbush, and thanks Thank you, everyone, for um, tuning in. So today we wanted to um, bring some information and resources to you in regards to workforce, um, human resource, um, what you need to do for the next step, um, how can you cope through the COVID-19 um, pandemic, and what would you prefer to do even while you are waiting for your job to perhaps go back to full process. So today we have two experts that are in the studio um, today, and um, our first um, guest, she is the CEO um, of, um, if I got it pronounced right, the HR Group Chic, and so she is um, none other than Angelique Hamilton. And so our next guest um, that's in the studio, she is um, the global um uh, uh, head of Human Resources at Institutional Shareholder Services, and she is none other than Miss Alexis Dower. If I'm not, if I'm Dower, yeah, right. you got you, okay. you got it right. Okay. <laughs> perfect, perfect. So we're going to get right into um, um, allowing the guests to be able to introduce themselves, and that way, instead of me or someone else reading off our, a total dialogue. This way you can be able to get a full concept as to what you will be getting, um, I guess, if for lack of words, meat and potatoes from each expert on today. So we're going to first start with um, <clears throat> Alexis, and we're going to bring her in and let her be able to share with you a little bit about what she do, her institution that she works for, and how it impacts um, workers and the workforce on a global aspect. Sure. Thank you so much, and thank you for having me on the show today, Diane. Mm -hmm. I'm really okay. excited to be here and talk with all the listeners. So mm -hmm. I am the Global Head of Human Resources for ISS, for short, Institutional Shareholder Services. And that is a group of companies that empowers investors and companies to build for long-term and sustainable growth. And we provide high-quality data, analytics, and insight. We have about two over, I should say, now 2,000 employees across 35 uh, global locations. And today, ISS is the world's leading provider of corporate governance and responsible investment solutions, market intelligence, fund services, and events and editorial content for institutional investors and corporations globally. So in a nutshell, we are um, financial services, kind of straddling um, the technology industry as well. And we are known back um, from 30 years ago for corporate governance, so weighing in on how corporations um, govern their companies and their board. And we've been growing in the environmental, social, and governance space. And my role, as Global Head of Human Resources is I lead a team across the globe and we um, to support an inclusive and diverse culture of engaged and high-performing professionals. My job has changed dramatically over the last four months, okay. five, five months now <laughs> with COVID coming in, but um, we are still hiring. We, re we um, hire I'd say about 400 people a year on average um, because we have about 200 of those are temporary staff as well. So I can cover kind of both things as, as we talk today. And I've been um, at ISS through various acquisitions. Um, I joke around. I haven't left my, my seat in about 17 years, but I've been with a few different companies. And about six years ago, ISS spun out of MSCI, which is when I became the global head of human resources. Mm -hmm. Wow. What an awesome um, portfolio, So, um, and thank you so much for that. So we will hear from you next, um, Angelique, and you can share with us um, as to what you do and how you impact um, employ employees and employers on a daily or weekly basis. Absolutely. Well, thank you, Diane, and good morning, everyone. 
Uh, my name is Angelique Hamilton, and I'm the founder and CEO of the HR Sheet Group, where we help individuals and organizations create very organic, diverse, and engaging cultures. And what we actually mm-hmm. do is we help organizations stay very relevant and competitive in a really fast-paced world. So we're all about really utilizing tools and resources to strategize to understand how the implications of the choices that our clients make can actually impact their total company and organization. Uh, during this pandemic, um, I've actually had to pivot and actually to support individuals who are actually displaced or out of place of work to secure employment and hopefully a land that perfect job. Okay, okay, great. Wow, that is also awesome. Great. So we know that we are going to get the best out of what is the next step or how we can be able to cope uh, through the pandemic um, of the COVID-19. So we're going to go back to Angelique. Since you have um, like a um, your own company, you see the employees uh, perhaps firsthand a little bit, to me, I would say a little bit more closer. So what have you seen recently since everything has changed, everything has um, 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 revamped into a total different uh, um, um, style of working, a style of um, trying to look for jobs. It's, it appears that, you know, people appears that they cannot find jobs. So how does your organization be able to um, assure that um, individuals can be able to have a successful rate as to um, coming to your uh, platform to be able to? And then also, are there any counseling tips that you may give them? Because I'm going to be honest, since this has been going on, you have people that have um, endured mental illness issues. And so how would that impact on your, um, I guess, audience as you see them on a daily or weekly basis? Absolutely, yes. There is a, a definitely a mental impact. And what I tell individuals is definitely don't blame yourself. You know, give yourself that peace of mind. It's all about really trying to focus on developing you into securing the employment. We're now in a digital space right now. Uh, We Mm -hmm. account for nearly 149 million positions will be created as a result of this change by the year 2025. So that is a massive disruption to what we know to the traditional workforce. So what I advise individuals is definitely think of yourself as a brand. You know, think of yourself Mm -hmm. like you're a Walmart, you're a Target. You have to really define who you are when you're out there looking for that next job or that next role. Mm -hmm. The best form of that is your resume, how you document yourself and how you present yourself in the form of a resume. So, you know, like a Walmart and Target, you can't run a promotion, you can't run a commercial to sell yourself, but the best thing that you Mm -hmm. can do is sell yourself to the resume. So really Mm -hmm. seeking out the potential that you have, highlighting uh, all of your talents and all of your abilities so that you can showcase this information to the prospective employer. Because there are employers out there that are still hiring as we're going through Mm -hmm. COVID-19. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, um, you said something that was very, very important, and that was branding. And um, sometimes we we can take the, 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 the interest or the things that we know how to do best and turn it into a brand. We had that op- an opportunity um, back in 2014 to interview uh, one of the editors on the nightly business um, uh, news segment, and so she lost her job in the in the you know in the um economic downfall and so what she did she went back and she recreated herself you know um and brought her own brand forth and now she has you know uh, um brought herself up to where she's making like in the six uh digit figure annual income and so that is very very important i like what you said about branding that is very important because just because we don't have it doesn't mean that we are a failure and we can continue to be able to use what we have so um thank you so much uh for that angelique so alexis you see things on a a huge global presence huge global presence and when individuals um, are um, um, seeking for um, employment and what have you, um, what 
is it that you would like to share as to how they can be able to, um, I guess, reinvent themselves while they are waiting. Sometimes, look, sometimes individuals, after they find their brand or they brand themselves, they don't even go back to the corporate America job. They stay right where they are because they see a little bit more flexibility. So what would you say to that in terms of an individual trying to brand themselves? And and, and as you being a global leader, how would you be able to uh, come in and give resources and tips in, in regards to that? Sure, thank you. That's a that's a great question, and I loved what Angelique said about branding yourself because mm-hmm. I think this is such a unique time to do so. Right, we're we're all faced with challenges, with differences, people losing jobs, less opportunities out there. But we also can take a second to pause. And I've talked to many colleagues and friends. Um, people come to me, you know, that I that I've come across in in my uh, life, and say, you know, what do I do? And I said, listen, this is a great time to take a pause and as Angelique says find that brand of yours find what you're enjoying myself I've been working at home and I'm running this team I had to think of new ways to connect with all of our colleagues we started Mm -hmm. some town halls I started writing a note and all of a sudden my weekly note became something that I've realized I haven't worked as much as a writer. I'm usually someone talking to people, um, but this was another medium in order to share that. So I think, you know, finding this time to say, okay, you know, what do I enjoy doing? What, um, how can I get myself out there? What are other things I could do? As you say, Diane, you might find yourself in a whole different position than the one you mm-hmm. left. But the most important thing I could say to anyone right now is to network. Network, network, network. There's a saying, the best time was 20 years ago to start networking. The second best time is today. And I really think that if someone's looking, talk to people. Hi, what do you do? You know, if you're in a pickup line for one of your kids or if you're on the grocery store line I know we have our masks now it's a little more difficult but it's mm-hmm. still people want to connect and you can learn what other people do people might need something temporary they might say you know what oh you're a writer can you help me with this one piece that might turn <laughs> into five other things right down the road mm-hmm. so I always say invest in your relationships and network with people And then on the other side, what I would say, as someone who is trying to still hire people across the globe right now, there are jobs out there. Be patient with it. Just know things are a little bit different, even on the hiring side. We're doing it from our homes. We're doing it in different mediums. Instead of having someone join and and entering the office on the first day, we're trying to ship a computer to their home. So we're we're all in this together. Continue to talk to people. Continue to network. But be patient and follow up. The best thing to do is to follow up, especially in this environment. You know, don't, I don't, people sometimes don't want to nag or don't want to bother someone, but it never hurts to say, hey, you know, I sent my resume to you last week. I now see you're on LinkedIn. I just wanted to follow up and see if there's anything more you need from me. I think that's a wonderful tip to keep on somebody in the hiring forces radar. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, okay, absolutely. So um, we're going to um, go to another segment, and this is in regards to temporary workers. And so we're going to go um, back to um, Angelique, and this is in regards to one of the um, um, bullet points that you made, and it, it was in regard to temporary workers can increase compensation by project or assignment. So let's discuss that. Yes. Uh, definitely, and, and I, I actually agree with Alexis about reaching out, connecting, and following up uh, to uh, any type of prospects. But in this time, if you cannot find your traditional um, industry, this is a good time to actually freelance and look for temporary jobs to actually sustain you until you land that perfect job for you. So looking at things that you're actually good at doing, um, even if you're working remotely from home, if you have a craft or you have some form of activity that you currently do now, um, you can do that virtually. You can teach, you know, uh, an actual craft to individuals and um, use this as a form of income. Look for temporary remote-based positions. some are very contractual. There are uh, some opportunities out there now that is a new industry that are COVID-related, such as COVID tracing, 
which you can do from the comfort of your home, or you can actually teach from the comfort of your home. So taking those temporary roles until you can actually regain employment will actually help you in the meantime while you're trying to really navigate uh, this whole tricky um, deal of not only dealing with the pandemic, but also dealing with how to gain employment. Uh, because looking for employment is a full-time job, basically. And so you need time to really recoup and also earn compensation while you're actually in the process of searching for a new opportunity. Mm-hmm. Um, absolutely, because I feel that um, there is more conversation on the headlines, on the news, even from I'm, – I'm not for sure if the president is um, – collaborating on that as much, but I do know that there was a lot of talk in the news of how many people that are um, out of work, a lot of individuals, Mm -hmm. um, you know, we just heard on the news, I think it was yesterday where they cut the $600 um, 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 unemployment uh, benefits for those that um, are on employment, and of course, um, individuals have... um, I guess a little, con- I don't, I'm not for sure what it is because we're not hearing enough about temporary staffing. This is where the temporary staffing need to be at the 20th bar. It needs to be all the way up to the green fee simply because of the fact that there are individuals that are hiring corporations, businesses. It may not be what we want to see right now as a um, job, but it is very important to make sure that the individual stays uh, remains stable. So this question is for Alexis in regards to temporary employment. What are your referrals? I know that you have a huge um, impact um, as to um, 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 what you see as far as um, uh, how many um, individuals that you deal with on a global basis or what have you. So what are the impacts that you are seeing in regards to individuals seeking for a temporary um, um, strategy? And then there's uh, something else that the next question is going to be for Angelique as to why, this is after Alexis gets through responding, think about why people are more cautious of going to temporary agencies versus waiting on their full-time employment to come back. So the first question is for Alexis. I don't want to confuse you, but I just want you to think (laughs) about that. Just meditate on it. And so the first question is for Alexis as to what you see and how much you recruit constantly. You recruit over 200 um, uh, full-time and hirees a year and 130 temporary workers across um, the globe and what have you, but are you seeing an increase as the individuals wanting to step up more to the temporary while they're waiting on their full-time jobs to return? Most definitely. We're seeing a lot more people um, looking for temporary assignments. It's a great way to get your foot in the door with the firm. You get to know the firm yourself. So not only does the firm get to see if you're the right fit for them, but you get to feel, you get to learn. As Angelique said before, you can make some money during that time and learn maybe a new skill or stretch a little bit beyond something you were doing before. And I would say, you know, over 50% of those people we are really considering for full-time employment. Sometimes people just want it for a certain point in their life, and maybe it's now. Maybe somebody has a spouse that lost their role, and so they're going to step up and and do something, or maybe they are looking for something new. And to do something temporary is a great way to learn about a firm and to keep yourself relevant. I think it's always great to have something ongoing, even if that isn't the long-term role. It shows an employer listen, I kept myself busy, I kept learning, I made new contacts, I I met new people, and now I'm still on top of it and I'm still out there and I can continue to move to something new. So we are seeing a lot more. Um, We really enjoyed it. I think it's a great way for both employer and potential employee to get to know a firm on a temporary basis. And again, you probably will pick up something or make a contact you didn't have before. And even if it's not in that firm, I've had somebody who said, you know what, this this ended, this wasn't the best thing for me. But the person, my manager, their their cousin needs someone or their uncle needs someone, and then they've kind of hopscotched mm-hmm. over there. So again, just keeping yourself out in the market, connecting with people is a wonderful thing. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. So, um 
Angelique, you can go ahead. And so, and I want to interject uh, from uh, between there a little bit. I know I've already get, given you the question already, but um, sometimes individuals are optimistic about going to temporary simply because of the fact it does not offer full-time benefits. It doesn't offer medical insurance. It does not offer um, accidental insurance. It does not offer, a, a, you know, vacation time or what have you. But People are optimistic of going to temporary agencies, and also people have issues in regards to um, fair treatment. I want to interject that in there as well. So we want to kind of get away from help people to be able to understand the full view versus, Mm -hmm. you know, them not having no income versus them having income. Right. So, you know, when you're looking um, at a temporary employment, I agree with Alexis, this is definitely an opportunity for you to have a foot in the door. Uh, But there's Mm -hmm. been a stigma about temporary agencies, and temporary agencies are such that it is temporary. So when an individual is looking at an opportunity, look at it as a temporary mean in order to gain full-time employment. So you can use this opportunity to, one, as Alexis suggested, getting to know the organization, getting acquainted with the culture. Is this a place for you? It's almost like a tester that you're testing uh, this opportunity with the company to see if it will be a great fit for your goals and also for what you're trying to do in your career. Secondly, let's just look at this number. There are 30 million people unemployed. So when you're looking and making a decision, it's really difficult. But the flip side of that, if you're not taking this temporary work, you're without income because, as we know, the federal uh, employment assistance that we that was in place for um, for several weeks of the additional six hundred dollars uh, for thirteen weeks is on a standstill. So you're actually receiving the state information or the state So this would be the chance for you to, one, look for temporary work, uh, to gain additional assistance, reskill yourself. If this is another industry that you've never worked in before, this may be a new avenue for you to seek employment outside of your traditional industry. So one, you know, definitely looking uh, at the seasonal, temporary freelance work. Think of it as it is. This is temporary And and in terms of that stigma of you not being treated fairly, the organization is valuing you just like any other employee because you are a representative of that organization while you're working. So, again, just take, you know, just take a chance and look for those opportunities out there that are either temporary or seasonal. Mm -hmm. I absolutely agree. Go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, Diane, I was just going to share, you know, with, with all the listeners, I actually twice have done temporary assignments that have honestly changed kind of the the trajectory of my career. First, right when I was still in school and I was com- you know, I had a kind of a summer a summertime and I was looking for work, I called one of the temporary agencies and I said, "Put me anywhere. I just need to to make money. I'm in school right now." And they they placed me as an admin assistant at a large bank. Okay. It gave me my first insight into corporations, into what an organization looks like, and I got to feel kind of the energy and excitement around that. And I tell mm-hmm. you, when I graduated and was interviewing um, a couple years later, I was interviewing somewhere else, and somebody said, gosh, your name, that's so familiar. And we connected back. I had worked next to them during that temporary assignment. And, of course, that connection and them remembering me here at a whole different firm helped me to land that role. And then the second time, when there was a downturn, my um, I was a recruiter and my role was changing. And I said, let me take something temporary. I knew the market was funny at the time. And I found a wonderful temporary assignment as an HR generalist. And I took that on. It was three months. You know, people said to me, why are you doing that? Look for full time. You can, you know, what, what? and I said, listen, it's here right now. It's what I have in front of me. The people seem great. The opportunity seems great. And who knows? 
And guess what? I loved that job more than anything else. It set me on the HR generalist path. And from there forward, while they did offer me an opportunity, I stayed for a while and then kind of grew from there. So I can, you know, speaking from experience, doing temporary assignments opens so many different doors, both for yourself as a worker and just to learn more about the workplace. Mm -hmm. I agree with you both. Um, It gives you an opportunity to be able to get if, if, as Angelique stated, look at it as it being temporary. That's what it is. It's temporary. But you also get an opportunity, as both of you stated, that you can get inside to be able it, it's still opportunities on the inside of the door. You know, you may, you know, be able to, I think one time when I worked for a, a temporary agency, and it was in an industrial setting, but it was a clerical position. So even though I was out on the industrial floor with the rest of the um, employees, but somehow they recognized that I did not belong out there with them. So they, from time to time, um, and that was not being them being biased. It's just it was just something that they saw. So from time to time, they would pull me from the floor and put me up in the office and do uh, detailed work there in this person's office. It wasn't sweeping or mopping or anything like that. It it was things like dealing with clerical work. So once we get our feet on the inside um, of a corporation and what have you, there are other avenues and opportunities that can be um, open. And so that's, I guess, the reason why I wanted to be able to stress that so um, uh, fervently on the show in regards to temporary, because we keep we keep hearing, you know, there's 30 million people out of work. Yeah, but talent, temporary agencies are hiring um, to be able to fill positions, even in the clerical position, even in the nursing position. And so also it can also be an opportunity to be able to take up a, a course, a crash course, you know, for about five or six weeks because um, institutions are doing that online as well. So Sometimes you have to be able to modify some things in order to um, get a little bit further down the road while you're waiting on opportunities to be able to come back to you, if it comes back, you know. So the next question is going to be to Alexis, um, and that's in regards to corporate America women. And so um, take, for instance, we're going to use Forbes as for an example And so if the women from the top um, uh, find themselves not working due to the COVID-19, what other options would you uh, uh, be able to advise them to? I know we talked about, um, you know, going to the temporary agency and what have you, because according to, uh, you know, your description, you deal with a lot of high-profile clients in, in these type of areas. Um, in the workforce so how would you be able to even encourage them because sometimes it can be difficult for women to come down when they have been on a very tight tight rope way up there high sometimes it can be difficult for them to say you know I, that's, that's just beneath me I don't want to do that right now I'm just going to sit at home and I'm gonna, just going to wait and what have you and wait until everything cranks back up and it, and it may take a while for it to be able to restart itself so what would you um, like to share with the audience to the corporate America women as to what the next step they could be able to do so they can be able to be sustainable sure most definitely um You know, I just was reading yesterday, and even this is such a hard time for so many people, right? I mean, uh, I talk to employees Mm -hmm. around the globe, and no matter what location you live in, Manila, Paris, New York, Norman, Oklahoma, Maryland, um, London, we have people across the globe – Everybody is dealing with the same thing. So number one, know you're not alone, and we're in this together. I saw Michelle Obama just recently came out and said she's been struggling with the pandemic and feeling a little bit of Mm -hmm. depression as well. So just know everybody is, is, is doing that, and getting out there and talking to people is the first step. So making sure, you know, I, I would give advice 
the people in my firm. I said, every day at the end of the day, even on those rainy days, get yourself, if you can, outside for a walk or get yourself just kind of, you know, being safe, of course, but getting out there. You'll just see people. It will spark ideas. You'll have conversations. But for those who are then in the next step and kind of taking it further and and looking for something, there's two great ideas you can do, do right now. One is you do have a lot of knowledge. Become a mentor for someone, whether you share it on LinkedIn or someone you used to work work with. They, too, need help and advice in this time as well. And you've been through different things. You've been through different experiences. We've been through different downturns, 9-11, um, different market crashes and stuff. So this is a time where you can use that advice and share it to other people. And sometimes in mentoring someone, it will make you feel better. And ex- they might have contacts as well they can expose you to. The second suggestion is, you know, while you're looking and networking and trying to find that role, you can also volunteer. And doing something and volunteering, I know somebody who was a businesswoman who lived nearby me, and she was really struggling because she had just lost her job and she didn't know what to do. And so she took it upon herself, she had been a little bit in the fashion industry, to start making masks. And she was making those masks. Well, you next next thing, she had a whole group working for her, volunteering, and somebody came in, saw what she was doing, and actually started to purchase them from her. So here she said, I went from kind of down on my luck, feeling a little bit down, to trying to volunteer to help during this, and now I have all these opportunities. Somebody else was doing the same the same exact thing, who was um, in a kind of a career environment and feeling that this was a hard time. They started doing, you know, podcasts, reaching out to people on LinkedIn. And again, it spawned a whole new kind of offshoot and put them in a different direction. So I think during this time, of course, as I said before, networking with people is number one important. Even if it's not someone you think is in your field, they might have, again, an uncle, a friend, a spouse that is in your field and you'd never even realized it, and they can link you up. Even if you go for a walk in your neighborhood, run into your neighbor, who knows, they may be looking for some help at that time. And then number two, mentoring. Again, you're just building your contacts, and it shows you you're keeping yourself as a leader, as a manager, giving direction. And then lastly, volunteering, because again, that could give you some sense of purpose. It can keep you connecting with others and may turn into something different. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So would you like to um, reply to that as well, Angelique? Yes, I, you know, I agree with Alexis and definitely uh, repurposing your talents during this time. If you're a baker and you love baking, this would be a great time for you to set that up as a business. Or if you're, you've always done landscaping on the side on weekends, this is a good time to do that as well. And networking, I agree, is a great uh, way of really putting yourself out there during this time where you have not done before. You know, no one really likes to network, and it's usually a scary (laughs) task to do. But, you know, just reaching out to um, learn about other individuals, you know, join online communities. There's so many different online communities for women as well as for different segments of our population. So looking for those communities that connect with you, and you can possibly network with someone who has an opportunity. And uh, I would also just repoint to just reskilling. Uh, there are some initiatives out there now that if you've always wanted to try a new uh, skill that you've never done before, Microsoft launched a new initiative to help 25 million people uh, gain employment and gain new training in a skill that is different from their current skill. So just going out there, Googling and looking for those different um, training opportunities uh, to learn a new skill to really improve not only your brand again, but how you will market yourself Mm post-COVID. Because um, now, as we all see um, across the globe, that podcasting and also video conferencing are the two uh, most popular um, branding techniques that individuals are doing. I see attorneys, they're, you know, still, you know, setting up their 
um, uh, they, they are now setting a podcast. They, they were not doing this before, before the COVID, but now I'm seeing um, attorneys set up a uh, podcast. Uh, people are on Zoom. They're doing everything so they can perhaps maybe stay afloat and abreast as to what um, their field of occupation is. So it's very, very important, you know, when it comes to um, uh, remaining focused and still trying to strive um, we'll have to be able to consider both ends. If I don't have the full time, I will have to take the temporary. Still, at the same time, I'm still, you know, motivated in what it is that I have been called to do. Great responses. So, um, Angelique, um, another bullet point that I would like to um, bring out from your uh, response, temporary workers are usually segmented from traditional workforce, creating silos within departments. So share a little bit with us on that. Yeah, uh, that has been the traditional, per, you know, perception of temporary workers where they're, you know, mm-hmm. siloed from other workers, they're assigned separate projects or separate assignments. But in today's society, in today's workforce and economy, that is not the case. You're working alongside the employees. You're performing the same functions as a staffed employee. So there's no Mm -hmm. distinction really between you being a temporary worker versus an actual employee of the company. The only difference in distinction is the way that you're actually paid um, throughout, uh, throughout your work. So uh, that has, I, I don't know why, but that's always been that perception that, you know, th- those are temporary workers, give, give temporary workers a different, you know, task or a different responsibility, but that has changed. The scope of responsibility is the same for a temporary worker um, and a company employee. So you're working together to accomplish one goal, and that's just to complete the work. Mm-hmm. I, I, okay. I'd love to jump in. I, I agree so okay, much, Angela. <laughs> Yeah, Angelique, which is spot on. I think actually I'd even go so far to say a lot of people are actually really embracing temporary assignments or consulting assignments for that flexibility for themselves. Even pre-COVID, I've seen a lot more push in that direction. I have people, I'm looking to hire a full-time role, and they come to me and they say, listen, I'm not sure I want full-time. I'm not sure I want to commit. I want the flexibility of maybe a little more flexibility in my schedule, a little more flexibility in trying some different things and and not committing to one place and, and whatnot. But once somebody is sitting in a firm, just as Angelique says, it's the same exact work, this person sitting here and there, and many times nobody even knows the difference except for either the hiring manager or HR. Oh, wow. Wow. And so do we? Do you feel, uh, both with the last question um, that I would like to uh, ask, do you both feel that we will see more of the stay-at-home order is in regards to virtual working as um, to the pros and cons of going to work 9 to 5 every day. Do you feel that this is going to be a growing trend of the virtual aspect as to how individuals are working? Yeah, yes, I uh, I would definitely agree that this would be – I don't think it's going to be a trend. I think it will be our new normal that we will have a greater percentage of uh, work environments that are now virtual. Uh, The gig economy was the growing economy before COVID, and it has definitely expanded during COVID. So, you know, as Alexis mentioned, the freelancing, the the actual having that, that way of really building your schedule and creating a schedule that's beneficial to you, I do see that really uh, reshaping the way that we think about the workforce and the way that we think about the workday and the work environment. So, yes, it will be our new normal. Okay. Okay. Um, Alexis? Yes, I I agree a hundred percent. I think everything Angelique said is is spot on. It was changing before; it's continuing to evolve. More people are more comfortable being at home. The workforce force has proven they can do it. 
things are getting done. Things are moving forward. As we we started the conversation, companies are still hiring. It might be a little different. Maybe it's more temporary because of the now working from home situation. But I do continue to see it the new normal. And you see in the in the news a lot of companies announcing 50% of their their workforce will remain home. Some are even going further than that. People are getting rid of some office space. So I do see a change going forward. And I think, you know, just as we've talked about today, people being flexible and adaptable and being open to something a little bit different than the traditional work, you know, full-time role might benefit them in the long run and actually be, they'll be a better kind of worker for all of these corporations because of that ability to adapt and be flexible. Mm, Awesome, awesome. Well, we have reached our time limit as of right now. And so um, this is the opportunity where both of you all can be able to share um, any training, any classes, any books that you have written, any upcoming master classes that you may be um, sponsoring, um, any uh, social media handles where the audience can be able to um, follow you after the podcast. Uh, You know, we allow our guests to always um, be able to follow expertise and you know, in the future and what have you. So whatever you would like to share with the audience in regarding to your brand as to what you do, what you got coming up, how they can follow you on Twitter, Facebook, you can do that at this time and we're gonna start with Angelique. Well thank you, Diane. Yes, you can definitely follow me on social media on Instagram, Facebook and LinkedIn at the HR Chic Group and Chic is C H I Q U E. You can find me there. Uh, secondly, you can also find me on my website, which is www.hrsheetgroup.com, and I will be one of the presenters on the State of the Black Bomb Virtual Summit, which is occurring on this month, August 15th and the 16th. Okay, okay. Alexis? Yes, thank you so much, Diane. Um, I can also be followed on Instagram as well as Facebook, but the best one is LinkedIn, you will find me as Alexis O'Connor Dower. My maiden name is in there since uh, I've always had the, the career throughout. So Alexis uh, O'Connor with the apostrophe C-O-N-N-O-R Dower. And um, most recently, I was just featured on a Who's Who in HR podcast. I was episode number two, run by Network Wise. So you can find Network Wise, Who's Who in HR hashtag. And that podcast was just recently ranked number 14 out of 50 on Podcast Magazine's Top 50 Podcast. So that would be a great way to get to know more. And then, of, of course, you can find us on the Institutional Shareholder Services website and find any jobs we have posted for any listeners today who are out there looking. So either connect to me on LinkedIn or through our website if you're interested in further opportunities. Awesome. We have had a wonderful time with both of you ladies um, sharing your expertise and um, um, uh, resources for the audience on today. And then just to recap, we talked about temporary um, agencies and the pros and cons of that and how important that we could be able to still brand ourselves, get inside of the company, learn more about it. You can be able to learn and perhaps maybe even land a full-time job with a temporary um, agency. Um, Angelique also talked about branding yourself, rebrand yourself. You know, we don't have to always look for the, 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 the U.S., or the government to be able to come to us, we can bring, we can make our own impact for ourselves for income. So thank you both for being our guest on today. It was an awesome opportunity, and I enjoyed myself with both of you. Thank you so much, Diane. I enjoyed it as well. So nice to meet you, Angelique, as well. Great. So for all upcoming events and who's going to be next on the podcast, you can go to our website at www.womenwhorockwithsuccess.com. Enjoy your day.